Guys, we promised you more trips this year and we're delivering. This is going to be amazing. We're going to the other side of the world to check out the watch market. Welcome to 48 Hours in Hong Kong. Good morning guys, we are here on day one at the amazing Rosewood Hotel in Hong Kong. It's easy to think of Geneva when trying to conjure up the largest watch market in the world, but it's actually here in Hong Kong, which estimated to export $5 billion of our luxury favorite shiny things just last year. The collector world is thriving here as well, from the clandestine cigar fueled lounges of the big hitters to huge social gatherings of newcomers looking to build their collections. Not only is pretty much every brand here represented via ADs, there are 33 Rolex ADs, but also the grey market is absolutely insane here with watches lining the windows like expensive sweet shops. We have arrived at the Hong Kong Watch and Guild Show. Amazing place. I cannot wait to get inside and see what's going on. One of the biggest trade shows in Hong Kong. The Watch Guild Show has been in operation for over a decade and organizes between 10 to 12 shows per year, which is a testament to its popularity. The show brings dealers from across the world together to meet, eat, buy, sell and trade. The atmosphere is just brilliant. There's a palpable buzz in the air and wherever you turn, there's chatter. But at the same time, it's a refined din with no disturbance and certainly no raised voices. The security is on point and you can see that traders are comfortable, relaxed and hard at work. Here we have an Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Concept Tourbillon. The chronograph open-worked self-winding edition was introduced in 2018. Powered by caliber AP2949, it's the first Royal Oak Concept watch with a self-winding movement. Here we have the Jacob & Co Astronomia Clarity Edition. The Astronomia is the embodiment of 21st century ultra high-end watchmaking and a globally recognized symbol of Jacob & Co watchmaking expertise. A world first both in boldness of its unprecedented concept and its entirely mechanical construction, the Astronomia has gone beyond impressive horological achievements to become an outstanding multidisciplinary engineering accomplishment. Okay, now, what an absolute trio we found here. These three are all Platinum 5711s. The 113P is the Emerald version, the 112P is the Ruby version, and the 111P is the Sapphire version. These three watches are extremely rare and were given to only the highest VIP customers from Patek Philippe. What really sets these watches apart is they are all platinum and set with the most special emeralds, rubies and sapphires that Patek could find. 
So naturally, the best stand with the best watches was the official watches stand with a few favorites such as the 1103 Richard Meal in rose gold and the 1103 Richard Meal in titanium and my firm favorite and absolute grail, the white ceramic AP perpetual calendar. It has a white ceramic case, glare proof sapphire crystal and case back with a screw lockdown crown and a grand tapisserie blue dial. Guys, what a first day. We are now back at the Rosewood. We have seen the amazing watch show, but we've got one more surprise for you before dinner. We're gonna go and see a friend and see some amazing pieces. Hello guys and welcome. I have some extremely exciting things to share with you now. We are here with our friends Aristo and Jewelry in Hong Kong. They have some crazy pieces and they very kindly let us have a look. So I'm going to start with a personal favourite of mine. I've never seen this watch in person. It is none other than the Richard Mille 2102 Aerodyne Tourbillon and I am obsessed with it. Okay, so here I have the RM66, the rock and roll. This is incredibly special. And again, I've never seen one in person. Again, I am in RM heaven. This is the 6801 Cyril Congo. And in person, it's totally beautiful. The tourbillon running around all of the crazy graffiti, I have also heard that these are hand painted, so no two are the same. Completely wacky and such a beautiful watch. There's no wonder that these go for so, so much above their list prices. Now, I spotted something that took my eye and I have never seen the white one in person. It is the RM5201 Skull, but it's white and I've never seen that. That is incredible. Okay, so some might say, saving the best for last, Aristo has very kindly produced this. It is none other than the Patek Philippe Nautilus with the Tiffany dial. Guys, we are here at the end of day one. It's been an absolutely crazy day. We've seen so many watches. I've switched out the 5980 for the RM10 factory diamond for a bit of pizzazz on the first night. This is holy food, and I'm told it's the best duck in town. guys and welcome to day two we're here at this stunning rosewood hotel we are so fortunate to be here this morning i had a moment when i looked down at my wrist and i realized the 5981r is probably el jefe grande of all pateks and i absolutely love it it's just been discontinued so i thought 
Have we got a review on the channel? I had a little look and we don't. So what kind of watch channel doesn't have a 5981R review? So let's get into one now. Since its launch in Baselworld 2013, the 5981R with full bracelet and fume dial has topped the Nautilus want list. Now this watch, you may not know, has a very special place in my heart. It was actually the first ultra luxury watch that I ever tried on before working in the industry, and it set my heart on fire. So I can probably thank this particular model for my whole career. So having spent the last few years soaring above RRP, this has just been discontinued by Patek Philippe. Now, some of the online pundits are speculating its replacement. Some are saying that it might have been fully discontinued and the 5991R being its replacement. Now, I have to say, personally, I am obsessed with the idea of a slightly larger 5980. Now, if they brought this up by a millimeter in diameter, much like how with the sub, they brought it from 40 to 41 in that slightly beefier case. If they did this to this watch, I think it would be in grail watch territory for me. Slightly thinner with a new movement. I think it could be in game for Patek. And we're gonna find out together at Watches and Wonders in April with some leaks probably coming through in late March. Now, don't get me wrong. The statistics are very comfortable. At 40.5 millimeters wide, it is noticeably chunkier than the 5711, but I prefer that about this watch. And another thing that I think Patek have done very well here is they've actually thickened up the bracelet because the 5711-1R has an extremely thin bracelet, which if on this head would just be a disaster on the wrist. You get what you pay for with this watch. It really feels like it's worth every cent. And I've had so much fun in Hong Kong in this beautiful piece. It's an absolute honor on the 5980 1R. The finishing on this piece is absolutely superb. It blends alternating brushed satin with high polished finishes going through the bracelet and on the case sides. The bezel is brushed on top with polished facets and sides. The remainder of the case is polished bar the ears on the sides. It does use a pin and collar system, which is harder to resize than your normal screws. But once you're set for your size, it feels like it's going absolutely nowhere, this piece. And that's what you want when you've got something of this weight. An interesting point of reference on the Nautilus is that its crystal is also cut into a polygon, just like the bezel. While we know that the Royal Oak and the Nautilus are both Genta designs, of the pair, the Nautilus is the only one whose decidingly angular 70s designs echo through the whole watch. Because the Royal Oak has a standard crystal set into an octagonal bezel. Now, you may know if you watch the channel that black dials don't tend to really make me buzz much. It's because this horizontally embossed dial is in fact not a deep black at all. It goes all the way to smoky grey and it really drives me wild. Another thing is you have well loomed 18 karat gold markers and you can see loom all the way through the night. I've been testing. As you guys will know, water resistance is a huge plus for me. And this has 120 meters, which is more than enough for everything you need to do. Especially impressive as it has chronograph pushers. So I like that they've kept the nautical theme to the water resistance as well. That's a big box ticker for me. Now, I realize this has been a bit of a whistle-stop tour of this reference, but I will say one thing. This watch has accompanied me all around Hong Kong, and I've enjoyed it so much. It's truly, truly special, and I hope to own one one day. We are doing a last minute dash to visit a very close friend here in HK who's got some very, very special Richard Mille watches. Let's go have a look and see Joey HK. 
The smile, universal and multivalent. It's fundamental to our social interaction, an expression of our innate desire to connect with others. Now, this little yellow face that appeared in 1972 in the pages of the French newspaper Francois rapidly went viral. This new in-house automatic tourbillon caliber is highly technical and creative. It took three years just to develop. The smiley conveys positive energy and is a symbol of communication that comes to life today in the effervescent world of the RM88 Torbion Smiley. The Richard Mille RM3802 Torbion Bubba Watson is the fourth watch of the collection bearing Bubba's name over the sportsman's 10 years with the Richard Mille family. Produced in a limited edition of 50 pieces, it is pretty much the watchmaking equivalent of a hole-in-one. Manual winding tourbillon movement with hours and minutes. The base plate is machined from carbon TPT. This material consists of multiple layers of parallel filaments obtained by separating carbon threads. Hi guys, I'm just relaxing now back at the Rosewood, taking in what just happened. I never in a million years expected to be wearing an RM88 smiley and an RM3802 pink bubba. Wow, two incredible watches. And now I'm just sort of sitting here with that kind of feeling like I can't believe what I just saw. Joey HK, my dear friend, thank you so much for having us. It was an honor to come and film with you and we'll be looking forward to doing some collaborations in the future when you come and visit us. I can't wait and we'll tag you in the description. If anyone is interested in any of Joey's pieces, you can find him below. Due to the massive demand here in Hong Kong, official watchers are extremely proud to have opened an office here. And we are very, very proud of the dedicated and hardworking team here. It's absolutely beautiful and I'm having a blast. Guys, we are here on night two. It's the legendary Italian restaurant Carbone. I've never been before, but I've heard amazing things. Day two has been an absolute blast. Thank you for following me on the journey. Now let's go and get some food. Guys, thank you for joining me on this amazing journey. It's time to say goodbye to beautiful Hong Kong. And as I always say, without you, there would be no channel. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. Thank you for joining me for 48 hours in Hong Kong.